Thank you so much, Abby. Uh, uh, today I'll be talking about a case study on developing a marine spatial plan for the Malindi Watamu seascape. This is an effort that has been led by WCS uh, and other stakeholders like KWS, the Kilefe County, uh, and the Watamu Marine Association, alongside other stakeholders that we partnered with. Next slide, please. Yeah, so WCS launched the Marine Protected Area Fund in September 2016, and the idea here was to significantly advance the conservation of the world's ocean resources. Uh, and our, our goal is to assist countries to meet their own protection rules under the Convention of Biological Diversity. So far, the fund has had MPA initiatives in over 20 countries, including Kenya and Tanzania. And in Kenya, WCS is supporting two projects, uh, that is the Transboundary Conservation Project in uh, the South Coast, and we already have a contract signed, I think, with, the, with Wyomsa, where we are uh, kind of carrying out the preparatory activities that will enable the marine spatial plan, the development of the marine spatial plan for that area. And we have uh, a pilot project at the Malindi Watamu system, where, which I'll be talking about today. And that's where we are developing like a marine spatial plan. Next slide. Okay, so uh, we, 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 we got funding from WCS and we got funding in two phases. The first phase of the fund was to evaluate feasibility of marine spatial planning in the Malindi Watamu seascape. And phase two is actually the development of the marine spatial plan for this Malindi Watamu seascape. And uh, the, uh, our initial discussions with stakeholders from the area, uh, they identify the region between Tezo and Marereni. And uh, this area, uh, from the initial discussions, it was suggested that it goes up to the 200 meter depth contour. And this is because to offer to advance more protection for near shore ha habitats and also for marine mammals because we realize that this area is a highly uh, important area for marine mammals. Uh, next slide, please. Abby. Next slide, yeah. So we have, and um, this area, it's not devoid of uh, sectoral strategies, plans, and activities. And we have, like, on the top left, we have the Malindi Ungwana Bay plan, which is uh, a fisheries document. And the, the region that we'll be working with overlaps with this Malindi Ungwana Bay uh, plan. Then the second uh, 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 map you're seeing is some of the suggested oil and gas exploration blocks. As you can see, block L8 and L12 are within the general area that we are working in. And we have uh, the Kenya Wildlife Service has already delineated marine parks and reserves. And we have the Malindi Watamu, uh, uh, Malindi and Watamu parks and reserves being within the area that we are working in. We have this document for NEMA where they have delineated uh, sediment cells alongside along all the coasts so uh, certain cells have, have uh, they have kind of proposed development uh, or uh, environmental protection activities in certain cells and also we have uh, port activities being uh, being suggested for example Angomeni port and Amalindi port which are within the area that we'll be working in next slide So as mentioned uh, before, uh, this area is highly significant in terms of biodiversity and also uh, the, the, the socio-economic. You, re you realize that tourism, tourism and fisheries are an important uh, uh, economic activity in this area. And you have over 4,000 fishers, uh, fishers and fish, fishmongers who are practicing, uh, who are gaining their livelihoods from this region. You also have important habitats such as mangrove ecosystems. There are actually six important bird areas uh, within uh, this area. 
we have uh, uh, it's an important marine mammal area recognized globally globally and they are uh, like our cabinet secretary for tourism mentions we now have the duck migration initiative where you can come to kenya view the wild beasts and also come and experience the wild migration so Wakam is the place to be for that ecotourism culture and also corporate ecosystems are there next slide And uh, as much as we have all this biodiversity and social significance, social economic significance, we also have threats. And uh, top on the list is uh, destructive fishing practices and overfishing, uh, which is evident. We also have poaching of uh, marine animals, such as turtles. Uh, we have climate change impacts, uh, which are threatening ecosystems, such as uh, coral reef ecosystems and mangrove ecosystems. We also have an emerging threat, which is gas, uh, oil and gas exploration, which is something that must be taken into account. And also shoreline accretion and sedimentation, because this area also borders the Sabaki River. So uh, you get most sediments, uh, agricultural activities that extend further inland. Next slide, please. Just up, uh, go back one slide. Good. Uh, okay, so we carried out in the initial feasibility phase of the project, we carried out consultations with uh, stakeholders, and these were uh, uh, fishers uh, and uh, 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 fish, fish mongers, the mamakarangas, and we had. Uh, also representatives from Macadamia, Juan University, uh, Technical University of Mombasa, uh, and we had resource users, these are the fishers and uh, fishmongers, NGOs and civil society, and also government. We also had one-to-one -one, uh, meetings with the uh, CECs, county executive uh, officers, the ministers of the county, uh, and we reached a total of around 141 people and we were at this point we were just collecting opinions whether msp is feasible and just getting a highlight of the area next slide please and some of the questions that we asked was uh, what is your perception of the current state of the ocean how is the how is the health of the ocean currently and you can see that around 50% uh, mentioned that uh, they think that the ocean health currently is average and 8% mentioned that it is good. So combined, it's only 60% who think that uh, the current state of the ocean is good in that area. And we asked them then, how do they think that the ocean is managed? And we see that only about 30% uh, uh, say that the management is effective and only 3% who say that uh, current ocean management in the area is very effective and we asked them about if we continue managing the ocean in this in, in the way that we're managing it uh, what are the perceptions of the future and you see over 80 percent say that the think that uh, the if you continue managing the if you continue with business as usual the health of the ocean will deteriorate uh, somewhat or significantly next slide please And we tried also to judge whether people were familiar with the concept of marine spatial planning. And we see that only 25% were familiar, but moderately familiar, we had up to 36%. And we also tried to judge whether this, whether they thought if MSP was useful. And 80% of the participants thought that MSP was extremely useful. And the, that question that we asked is whether there is a need for to have a consultative decision-making forum. And about 80%, 77% actually mentioned that there is actually need to have a consultative decision-making forum to guide uh, resource management in the area. And we also conducted a review of the policy and institutional framework. And this happened, I think, uh, when we are starting this process, the National MSP Committee had not been set up. So we were learning as we were, we were going. 
And we found that there are many overlapping sectors and legislations that MSP will really help harmonize and guide integrated management of the area. So we are really happy to see that this process has taken place, has, has taken, has moved forward and we are now uh, also learning and borrowing ideas from the, from the other stakeholders who are leading the process. Next slide, please. Sorry, is it that one? Yeah, uh, there's, there's one slide uh, about this. Okay, just a minute. Yeah, so we also asked people about what kind of issues should be prioritized in the MSP and the top five issues that came up, all the issues were important, but the top five were in improving vessel and personal safety, ensuring sufficient fish stocks, preventing conflicts, curbing pollution, and conserving the mud the marine environment. So those were the top five uh, things that were prioritized from the stakeholders. Uh, next one. And now in the second phase of the project, we, we, are, we are now developing, uh, we are having plans to develop the MST. Uh, we had a project inception workshop and we brought stakeholders to discuss the goals and objectives for the planned area, like to have a vision for the area. And we've conducted socioeconomic surveys and this will help us now integrate uh, wider opinions into the marine spatial plan that we are developing uh, in six communities. And this, we are look to, talking about management preferences. Uh, we are looking at material style of life and household service. And this will also form as a baseline with which we can be reviewing the plan later. And we've also uh, done a participatory mapping exercise with uh, with stakeholders in the area and we've developed uh, like a draft map that we need now to go back and validate and also get more opinions from stakeholders. Next slide. So as I conclude, uh, some of the next steps that WCS is looking to, uh, to, to, to conduct uh, is to fill identified information gaps that are useful for MSP because in our feasibility stage, we kind of did uh, a desktop review and identified some information gaps. And also forming strategic partnerships and collaboration with relevant institutions, especially now that we have a national MSP committee that is championing the idea is to be able to form partnerships with this national committee such that whatever we develop can be integrated into the wider national MSP plan. And we, as, as as you've seen that the, the familiarity with MSP is still low in, in, in across most of the stakeholders, and we intend to continue outreach activities to raise awareness in the Malindi Watamu area, uh, and also to build up support for the for the plan that we develop. And finally, will be to develop the plan, launch it, and get relevant approvals. Uh, yeah. And with that, I think I'll end there by thanking our partners and all of you for also. Uh, uh, also staying in and listening to this presentation.